Mm. Oh no, you can see my face. Oh God forbid. Hey there, writers. Today's episode, guess what came in? That's right, my progressive shocks. Reached out to progressive, and they end up uh, sending me some shocks. I told them exactly what I needed, and the rep there was very understandable and nice. So, I got my shocks. So that's what today's episode's gonna be, is gonna be replace the shocks. This is what we're going to be doing. Alright, as you can see, the shocks. So what we're going to be doing is just this right shock for right now. And then of course whatever we do on the other side, we repeat. And of course I never had the tools ready, so... Alright, so many of you might be aware of the difficulties in which I've been having with uh, just uh, getting that jack stand underneath there for various projects. So what I did was manage to get that underneath there with extreme difficulties. It involved using another jack, jacking it up, well whatever. Because these shocks are, let's see, I believe 10 inches or 10 and a half. That's been causing a problem with this thing being extremely low to the ground. So, hopefully with the 13.5s, this will take care of the problem. In fact, I think the 13.5s will definitely take care of the problem. Weird. So, pretty much what you're going to do, as I said earlier, is what you do on one side, you do on the other. So, what we'll be doing is using a uh, Torx T50... Because that's what this uses Torx T50 uh, sock, uh, 3 8 socket bit to loosen these up or we could use the socket wrench but I prefer using power so that's what we'll be doing so I shouldn't have much of a problem but what we're gonna need to do is remove all these you can't do just you gotta remove them both so that's what I do so what you do on this side doing that so I'm only gonna record that so let's see. tires on the ground now one of the things that you can do is what I've seen some people do is they run a strap through here onto the rear tire and run it across the street on the, the seat so that way it goes in fact you could wrap it twice around there but the problem with that is that you don't really want to do that. That's if you're going to replace the same for the same. Now since we're going to be going up about two additional three and a half inches, if I read that right. Um, doing that, we're just going to have to uh, raise this, the motorcycle lift, when we need to. Now, if I actually had a real, if I had an actual ride-on lift, this would be a lot easier, but I don't, so this is what we're working on. So, we'll undo And, because this happens to have a nut, I'll just go ahead and put this. The nut itself is 19 millimeters. So, we'll loosen it up. And, lost that. Now these were already pre-loosened because I have a tendency of doing that. 
I'm not some guys that'll record and I'm trying to avoid that now. Just record my stuff. So what we'll do is we'll stick this over on my little bench. In fact, uh, yeah, we'll stick this on the bench and continue on from there. All right, so now we're over at the bench and you can definitely see the difference. Got 13 and a half. These are the 13 and a half, of course, and these are the tens. Now, one of the things I like to do is uh, lube up the areas in which you need to. In fact, the packet was there, but it's not needed anymore. These sleeves are not required, are not needed, because this bike does not need them. And what you do is uh, you end up getting a washer set that comes along with it. So, um, with these uh, shocks. So you just want to re, uh, use that with it. Now one of the things to keep in mind is because you got this back spacer, you want it to be on metal on metal. You don't want to pinch it to the point in which you're causing all sorts of issues. So, put the sleeve in through here, bind this in, and the spacer will go towards the bike. And that's pretty much all you really need to do on these. And then it comes with four spacers, comes with four washers. So we'll, uh, yeah, definitely a lot. Definitely a big difference in here. We'll continue on from there. But installing will be easy. Um, since I already got everything pre-staged up, so we'll just uh, reassemble. So one of the things that happened on this bike when I was uh, uh, disassembling the other side is that I had to jack the bike up so that way everything was level enough. So we're just going to hand tighten this for right now. Or give it a little impact. You don't want to impact everything right away. keep the spacers where they're supposed to now I've seen on some bikes that they don't happen to have the t50 on here they got something else I remember one of the youtubers out there or part-time youtubers slash mechanic he had mentioned something about the the bike um, let's see he had mentioned something that not supposed to have the T50 on there. I'm actually supposed to have like the Allen head. And this being the T50, being star pattern. Make sure it's the one with the star pattern on it, not the one with the hole in it, because that's a secure and they'll break this off and it's not made for that. Now we're gonna jack this up. Go. Then get that nut on there. Like I said, this takes a 19 millimeter um, uh, wrench. I tried the standard American and it didn't work. The SAE. For some reason, it didn't work. So. And that's why you put things on here loose and so that way you can have some uh, give here and there on what you need to now of course all you gotta do is uh, impact it in and torque to spec of course i'll do that off camera Some people just go with tightening, some people don't. And of course, over here. There we go. Now, as I said before, 
I like to keep all the hardware around. All right, let's go for a long shot now. All right. So, I mentioned that I wasn't able to get this out of here. Stand set up right. I might not be able to get it out of here because of the... Let's go over here. There we go. I might not be able to get it out because of the trailer that I got over here. But we will see. Alright, so... And voila. And just like that, we're ready to roll. We'll take this off. We'll take the bike off for a ride. See how she handles. And go from there. So it just so happens that this coincides with uh, another project. <laughs> Getting my hair cut. Yeah, seven minutes to get there. Which isn't too far away, so... We will give this a try. No, I don't have my gloves on. Normally I do. This time around I don't. here always happens to have bikes parked over in front of it not the one in which the brick is at but the other one now they decided to redo this area over here uh, they call 28 West uh, they put in apartments over here did some of the road work for the shopping area so that way it would be considered to be a street not a lot of big things over here I got this place called that used to be a save a lot but now it's called price drop I think it is or price cutter that's what it's called So we will see. go get a cheeseburger and a coke but I'm in a bike and I don't have cup holders it's not like I got a gold wing or anything yeah one of the things that they did over here was it was just a giant parking lot they used to have studio 28 over here uh, Studio 28, like, uh, well, it was a movie theater. Now, it started out as a drive thru And 
then became a multi uh, seating theater. But in the 90s, though, uh, sales started declining like crazy. In the early 2000s, sales sucked. In fact, only half the theater was used. So they end up uh, demolishing it. Well, then with the well, they end up demolishing it after uh, Celebration Cinema had been opened up. Uh, Rivertown Crossings uh, pretty much took a good portion of the business. And then over in Kalamazoo, another Celebration Cinema over there. Kalamazoo and uh, M6. That ended up taking a good portion of the business over in the area. And so they didn't find a need to have uh, Studio 28 open anymore. Even though it was part of Celebration Cinema family, they got rid of it. But yeah, uh, this is actually a nice smooth ride. It'll really be a test this is when I do my uh, weekly ride and head on over to Holland. Or maybe drive through uh, Grand Rapids <laughs> with all their horrible streets that they have. So I gotta say that all in all, it wasn't that bad of a ride. Well, uh, seems to be quite well, quite good. So, uh, rear shocks replaced, torqued. Uh, bike needs to be cleaned up a little bit, maybe some improvements made here and there. But all in all, I gotta say that the bike uh, rode nice, whether the rear is concerned. Now it's to take care of the front. I don't see any leaks, but most likely it just needs a, uh, yeah, probably needs a whole rebuild kit. No big deal. Stuff like that's actually pretty easy to learn if you know what you're doing. And then I happen to know what I'm doing. I read manuals, I watch YouTube videos, that type of thing. And also having a mechanic background helps out as well, so... Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, there'll be some further on videos of checking out the rear suspension, making sure that works well. Sorry. When I rode on Mother's Day, I had a little bit of a problem of uh, with the bike and the new uh, foot pikes. Squirrel! <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yes, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Now as always, ride safe, and I'll see you in the next ride.